a video here on this Sunday afternoon. Yes, I decided to come back on Sunday. I'll explain why in just a second. But I wanted to show you back to this uh, centerpiece for just a second. Uh, I wanted to show you that Chris did rig up the three candles in these lanterns and the very light box is still down in the center and I actually have it is rigged up but I actually have to use the fairy light remote to turn them on and off when we turn all of the decor lights on from A-L-E-X-A. -E I'm not going to say her because she'll start doing stuff funny. But anyway, I wanted to show you where he snugged the external battery. This is another external battery that we had here and he ganged them all together and we we're plugging them in with the USB cable, see that? into the external battery and this is i don't know whether it shows how much yeah there's 95 percent charge left on this so we'll just let this go and we snug it right underneath the the uh lazy susan and snug the wires underneath there and you never ever see it see that and we know right where the battery is so when we need to pull it out of there to recharge it it's easily found and easily done so, and the same with the fairy lights, it's snugged right underneath here. I just have to pick that up, pull the battery out, recharge it and plug it back in. Doesn't cost us a penny to do this and it is prettily lit all the time. So anyway, just wanted to show you uh, that Chris did rig them up for me. So there are no like double A batteries and any of those candles any longer, just his little dowels. If you wanna know how he does that, he has a, he did a tutorial video for us and I have it linked on my, in the description box of every video I put up. I encourage you to go if you're interested in saving some money and not having to buy a bunch of batteries and figure out a couple of easy ways to do this, go check out his video for sure. So, all right, I'll be right back in front of the camera. Hi everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are y'all doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stepping back by to see what I'm up to on this Sunday afternoon. Yes, yeah, Sunday. I know I said on Friday that I would be back on Monday, but it's not like I fibbed to you or anything. I just decided to come back today. Uh, just acknowledge that I started my video out with this uh, beautiful centerpiece. Thank you so much, first of all, to all of you who have left me such wonderful comments about this centerpiece. I'm sitting here at the, you know, at the kitchen table with my three lantern centerpiece from Friday's video. And what I just talked about and showed you with the external battery and so on. It is really making me happy to have this on this table instead of what I did. Not that what I did in the years past wasn't pretty, it was, but this is so much more convenient also, too, ganging the three lanterns together on top of the Lazy Susan really is making a statement. It's really making a bold statement. So I'm really enjoying this. So thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, all of that. Thank you so very much for all of your comments. And I've taken them all to my heart. I've, I, I don't know whether I've made it back into to heart everybody, but you know I will get there. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to thank you for that first. And uh, I'm gonna tell you about our car first thing here, but also in this video, I have a little haul from Perpetual Ribbons. And I wanna tell you about a little trip to Williamsburg that we did yesterday and haul just a few things. And I have about six or seven questions. So I have a lot to talk to you about and I wanted to get all this done and free my Monday up. I needed to free Monday up for myself to get ready for my home tour, you guys. I really do need a couple of days to really do my filming in this house. I need to clean up a little bit and I need to do a little bit of, of filming in the house. The way I do my home tour, just to explain to those of you who have just joined me, thank you, by the way, to all of you who have just joined me, to all of you who have been with me, from the very beginning, come somewhere in the middle up until just a minute ago. Thank you guys so very much. I appreciate those subs you subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, now's a really good time to do it, If you, please, so you don't miss my home tour. I really love sh sharing my home tour. Not that my house is any prettier or any better or any anything, uh, but I really love for you guys to see the whole thing in one fell swoop instead of just a vignette here and a vignette there. I like to get back and take sweeping shots of the of the whole 
of the whole house and of the rooms and everything. So if you would please consider subscribing, I would so much appreciate it. Hit that bell, uh, hit the like and share with your friends and family. I would really appreciate that. Uh, but did I say, and I also have questions to answer. So I've got quite a few things to talk to you about in this one. And uh, let's start with the car. How about that? And I didn't mean to make you guys wait. I'm so sorry. Something else always took precedence. It was and a it harrowing was a week last week. Let me tell you guys. <laughs> uh, so first of all, let me back up and kind of tell you a little bit of a backstory. Uh, what we bought was a Hyundai Sonata hybrid. That's what we bought. And my dad has this exact car only in a 2021. We bought a 2022. Uh, we, dad insisted that we, you know, when we went to Daytona last year, we flew to Daytona. We took dad's car and parked it at the airport. And Chris drove dad's car down to the airport and really, really liked it. He's, and I really, I was in the back seat and I really liked it. It was a smooth ride, comfortable seats. And I was like, dad, this is a spiffy car. And it was pretty to look at. It's very sleek, very nice, very pretty to look at. So before I go on to tell you more about this story, let me morph into a little bit of footage I just took when we got home from lunch. Uh, excuse my neighbor who has who turned on his his lawnmower right as I was filming. I'm I'm sorry about that. So you'll hear him in the background. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and it's only about a minute minute and a half long at the most. Uh, but I want to show you the car, and then I'll be right back and we'll talk more about it. Okay, dokie, you guys, morphing in here with a little bit of footage of our new Hyundai Sonata hybrid. Here it is. As I said, it's black. Look at the spiffy wheels on it. <laughs> it is a snazzy looking car. I'll walk around it here. And excuse my neighbor on his, <laughs> on his lawnmower. Sorry about that. Oh my goodness. So sorry. Anyway, I won't take long, but we really like the look of it. It's snazzy and pretty and kind of sleek. This, Chris and I were just saying, this is our first black car ever. I'll show you the back end in a minute, but there's the interior. Kind of a two-toned camel color and gray. And it's very nice inside, leather seating. It's, it's very pretty, very, very, very nice. And uh, coming around here to the back, has a little, little fin on the back, if you will. And here we go. Sonata Hybrid. Love it. Spiffy car. Alrighty. I'll see you back inside in just a second. Spiffy, sleek looking car. Oh my goodness, that's our first black car ever. We usually get white or gray, uh, or not gray, silver. Uh, we've had silver and blue cars, and but most of, the, most of the cars lately, my Outback was a tungsten color, which was kind of a gold color. And then Chris loves white. Chris won't buy anything but white. And, and you know, that's fine. And we were looking for a white. So let me back up to tell you the story. So anyway, we decided we wanted to get a Sonata. My Outback uh, was a 3.6 liter, had a 3.6 liter engine in it, which was a, a six cylinder. And it was a gas guzzler, you guys. I'm telling you, that thing drank gas. It was a pretty little car, though. I really enjoyed it in the time we had it. Uh, it was pretty to look at. I had kind of, I hadn't custom ordered it, but I had asked them, you know, for a specific color scheme. Really enjoyed the car, but what I found was I wasn't very comfortable in it. I just, it was, I'm very tall in the legs and it cut my legs like mid thigh or even higher than that. And I was not uh, real comfortable in that. Regardless of all that, we decided that we would either trade or sell my car and then get the Sonata Hybrid. Well, as you all know, cars are hard to come by right now and they're not all being sold for the best prices and so on and so forth. So we started looking on autotrader.com. If you've never gone to autotrader.com, 
check it out. It's really nice. Well, you can put in all your parameters that you're looking for in, in so many, just, you know, 50 miles away, 100 miles away, 200 miles away or whatever. Well, we started at about 200 miles away and we could only find three. This was back in the summertime. And they were way overpriced, way overpriced. And we're like, Psh, we're not going to do this right now. We're going to wait. We're going to wait till this gets better. Well, then Chris was looking online and we kept, you know, we kept searching. Oh, I'd say once, twice, three times a week, we would look and say, hey, did you see anything on Trader? No, I didn't. Did you find anything? No. Well, one morning I came out and Chris says, R, I found something at, um, oh, I got to think of the, uh, the name of the Hyundai dealer. Hyundai, Broad Street Hyundai down in Richmond, Virginia. I believe is what it's called. I'll correct myself if I'm not right. They uh, had a black, they had our car in route. It was in route. Now we didn't know what that meant, <laughs> but they had it for a thousand under thousand dollars under MSRP, which Chris always says, I can get it for a lot better, but I'll tell you why we went ahead in a second. And it was, it was a good, it was very well priced. It was the best priced Hyundai Sonata hybrid that we found anywhere. Best priced. Plus, it was just like my dad's. It was black with the camel interior. We knew exactly what it looked like because we'd seen his. And we knew exactly what we were getting. A lot of times people are saying, I'm not going to buy a car sight unseen that I can't see. Well, we knew what it looked like because of my dad, you know. So anyway, he got in touch online with one of the salesmen down there and they weren't bantering back and forth. And, you know, Chris says, I want an out the door price. And I... You guys, I am not a banterer like that. I'll claw, crawl under the table as soon as, when Chris gets bantering back and forth and, you know, uh, really negotiating these prices, I just, I just want to die. I just want to get up and walk out. And my dad's like, I love doing that stuff. Oh, I love it. And I'm like, I don't love it. And he says, I know your mother was the same way. She would get up and walk away. I said, I have definitely done that before. But anyway, did Chris did this all over the internet you know, back and forth with this guy. Anyway, they came to an agreement and it was supposed to be in the, uh, you know, the supply train issue, you know, issues and all that stuff. It was supposed to be in the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Well, it never got there. It was delayed. And we're like, oh boy, I wonder if it's sitting out, you know, off of the Pacific Ocean on one of those barges or something, Lord forbid, you know, but apparently not. It had come right, right on shore and had come right across the country and it got here on Wednesday. And uh, that's why my video was so late going up on Wednesday evening, you know, so we went ahead on down there and picked it up and, uh, we were in and out of there, lickety split. Now, one thing we were thinking about trading it in at the dealer for this car, trading my car, trading the Outback for this car. Well, they were not going to give us what we knew we could get from CarMax because we had checked with CarMax. If you guys don't know about this, you can take your car over to CarMax and they will give you an estimate of what they will buy it for. And they will buy it from you for that price that day. And they gave us a very, very, very good offer on my Outback and we took it. So we ended up selling the Outback at CarMax and then going down and buying the, the, the Hyundai. So anyway, when all was said and done, it is a lovely car. Uh, it, it rides like a dream. You cannot hear it. It is the neatest thing ever being a hybrid. It is so quiet, you know, such a quiet car. It rides beautifully. We are very happy with it. Very, we are very, very happy with it. Like I said, it wasn't an exorbitant purchase. It really didn't cost us anything because we were, you know, we did the, the Outback and got a really good price. See, it was relative. It was all relative, you guys. Yeah, we might have spent a little bit more for the Hyundai, but we got a lot more for the Outback than we thought we would get. But anyway, I'm not going to go into to money and everything, but, you know, it, it wasn't like we had bought some, you know, exorbitant car, but we just, we really wanted something different. I wanted something different and Chris for, for comfort. And Chris really liked this car when he drove it. And he said, let's get it. Let's go ahead and get it. And I'm like, he said, if we can find one. So anyway, I'm really thrilled with it. So that's our new car, a Hyundai Sonata hybrid. I know some of you were thinking, I bet she got another Outback or she got an Ascent or something like that. Nope. We went back to a sedan. Can you believe it? Thanks, dad. <laughs> because he, my dad always has really good taste in cars, you guys. He always has the spiffiest cars 
And this car is, is sleek. It is just a sleek looking car. Anyway, so Merry Christmas to us. <laughs> uh, okay, so there we go about the car. And let's see here. Let me, let me tell you about our trip to um, yesterday down to Williamsburg. I've been wanting to go down just to see what the Christmas mouse has this year. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go into the pottery and that was it. And we wanted to go to Captain George's seafood buffet to eat lunch because we really love that. And we haven't had that in a long, long, long time. We haven't been, well, I'm fib and we, we, we went to Myrtle Beach. We went to Captain George's there, but here in Virginia, we haven't gone to this Captain George's in a long time. So but anyway, so we get in the car and we head down there and uh, first stop was the pottery. I, I might have some pictures here that I'll be putting up here. Y'all talk about uh, supply chain problems. Oh my goodness. They even have closed down part of the pottery. Now they moved it. They moved it to another building, you know. So we finally found, I was looking for flags and I was looking for uh, candles and I finally found them down at the other end. And uh, we talked to the lady at checkout and I said, is this a, a supply chain issue? And she said, partly yes. She said, but honestly, we're letting our, our inventory dwindle because we do inventory at the end of the year and something about taxes. And Chris understood what she was saying. I was like, oh, okay. She said, it'll get better. Come back in Mar February or March and it'll be much better. I said, okay. I said, well, I hope people, well, to myself, I said, I hope people are coming down here to buy Christmas gifts in here, you know, because they really were, uh, what much to be found in there, but I did manage, <laughs> I managed to find a few things, <clears throat> two things. These were $1.98 a piece, and these were just little blue and white towels. I wouldn't use this as a, um, a towel to dry dishes. I would put this in the bottom of a tray or fold it so that one of the flowers was sticking out, you know, and, and put it over the edge of a tray, you know, type thing that kind of thing. So, but anyway, I got two, $1.98 a piece. I didn't think that was too bad. <laughs> so I got myself two of those and I got a little garden flag. I think this was $11.99. Cute little snowman with a little deer. Looks like Bambi, doesn't it? Aww. Isn't that pretty? Cute little flag, $11.99. So that was cute. So then I got a larger flag. There's a picture of it. I'm gonna show it to you in a second here. That's a beautiful cardinal. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. Big, big, big. And this would be good for winter because it looks almost like um. Maybe snow covered berries there a little bit. I think I might put this up in the winter time after Christmas. Wouldn't that be pretty? Love that. So I think this was $19. They didn't have hardly any flags though. They didn't have any anything but some fall flags, which I didn't get any fall. And they didn't have any they didn't have any spring. I mean it was pitiful. It was pitiful. They didn't have any candles. That, that I wanted to buy anyway. They didn't have any anything that I was interested in really in there. I mean, it was picked clean, you guys, picked clean. So uh, I was a little disappointed. I was a little disappointed in the pottery part, you know, but that's okay. Hopefully, Hopefully we'll give it another try in the spring, you know, and see if she's right that they don't, you know, get stocked back up again. I sure hope they don't uh, get closed. You know, the Yankee Candle, the big flagship store down there closed because of COVID, due to COVID. I, it just makes me so sad. That store was amazing. It wasn't just for candles. It They had Vera Bradley. They had Willow Tree figurines. They had Hallmark cards. They had a beautiful little center section where they had a big clock like a clock tower kind of thing where where like the, the animated figures would come out and sing and dance every whatever 15 minutes. It was an experience. They had a Christmas shop in there. They had an old country store shop in there. They had a toy shop in there. They had a, a, a sign shop. I mean, fudge shop, popcorn shop. 
It was an amazing place. And because of stupid COVID, it closed. And that just makes me sad. I am sure that that store employed many, many, many people. It just, I, you know, I think about the families that were affected, not just me who can't go shop there, you know, oh, whoa, so, so, so sad is for me, which I'm sad, of course, but the more important thing is about the people who, whose jobs were lost because, you know, they couldn't keep up, you know, that just makes me sad. So anyway, we went by there, rode by there, and I saw that, and I was just like, oh my goodness, they had a Carabas that sits on one end of it, and the parking lot was full in front of Carabas, but then it just went empty when you went down in front of the Yankee Candle, and I was just like, this is so sad. This makes me so sad, you know? But then we rode on up the road and said, all right, well, let's go into the Christmas Mouse. Thank goodness Williamsburg has two Christmas Mouses because the one Christmas Mouse that we normally do frequent was full. People waiting to pull into the parking lot, people waiting to pull out of the parking lot, people riding around the parking lot looking for a place to park. It was crazy busy, crazy, crazy, crazy busy. And we just said, forget it. We're going to go on over to Captain George's. They opened it too. Captain George's did. And when we rode by, we saw a, a, a line forming outside. Well, we thought, oh, do we have time to go to the Christmas house? The Christmas, sure, we have time. So we went over there and had to turn around and come back. And by the time we got back, there was a line all the way down this big sidewalk that goes down the whole side of the building. <laughs> and we're like, we're going to eat at Captain George's today. It's okay. We're going to eat here, <laughs> you know. So we got a parking place and got in line and... Uh, waited for about five minutes by the time we got there for the doors to open. And boy, when the doors opened, they people just zipped in. I'm telling you, you guys, I couldn't believe how fast people were being seated. I mean, that must happen all, every day or every weekend because they were very, very good. They they worked like a well-oiled machine. So we were seated. Chris said, Let, can we be seated uh, close to the buffet, please? Because here I came, you know, I was doing okay, but I was like, ugh. You know, after standing in the line and walking and, you know, I walked a long way. It's a long way down the line. And then to get into the building, it's, you know, it's a little bit, bit of a, a little bit of a trek out of the parking lot, you know. So I was doing okay, but it was like, I'm getting a little sore. <laughs> so, and they said, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. They accommodated us. So they sat us down and here came our waitress, Janice. Well, Janice was one of the nicest ladies. Janice, I hope you're watching, giving you your shout out here like I promised. <laughs> oh, she was the sweetest waitress we've had in a long, 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 long time. I am telling you one thing. And uh, she was so good to us. She went and what they would do, the way they were handling their crab legs, as I don't know if y'all know, but crab right now is super expensive, which is killing us because I've, I've got to make two crab souffles for Stacy's house and then one more for us here. And we're making a crab dip recipe that I have. So we need like four pounds of crab meat and it is like 30 some dollars a pound for crab meat. It is crazy expensive right now. So oh, one of the this Captain George's buffets, you know, one thing they tout is all oh, you can eat crab legs. So she said, what we do with the crab legs is you can take a plate up and you can get two, two claw, you know, two sets of, what is it? Five claws, you know, of, of your snow crab legs on. And he said, but you can take two plates and get two on each plate and so on. So Chris took two plates, got two on each plate. I took one plate and got two on one plate and we came back and then we both went to the buffet. Well, we got back and here came Janice with more crab legs for us. Bless her heart. She must have known we, we love crab, you guys. We could eat crab. We could eat our weight in crab and that's a lot of crab for me. <laughs> uh, but we really enjoyed it. It was, it, it, it cracked really nicely. It was lovely. So we had mostly crab legs. I did have a little bit of a salad and I had a little bit of scallops. Chris did too. Scallops and he had some peel and eat shrimp. Uh, but basically, we ate just crab legs. We're paying that for crab. We're pay, it was, a, you know, it's expensive to eat at Captain George's. I'm not going to lie, you know, but we don't do it very often. And it was a treat for us just to spend the day together and to go to Captain George's. And, uh, but we just had a great time with Janice. Uh, she got us, got me a cup of tea, bless her heart. I felt, I, I loved her for that. And Chris, a cup of coffee. They had a big, beautiful Christmas tree. It was, I don't know, 15 feet, maybe 12 feet high. And she said, before you guys leave, let's take a picture of you guys in front of it. I said, okay. So 
We took a picture in front of it and we came back to the table and here came another little lady up, Vanessa. If you, I think your name was Vanessa. If you're there watching, hi, leave me a comment. <laughs> Ask Jesus, I hear you're a YouTuber. Cause I had told Janice, I said, yes, I'd love to show my um, YouTube community some pictures from in here and I hopefully have been showing you some beautiful well or I will show you now some, some pictures, pictures around here. Captain George's just lovely decor it was very very well done it's a beautiful place very very nice uh but little Vanessa came over and asked if she asked about my YouTube channel so I gave her one of my cards and said here you go this is one of my cards and uh you know Come and say hi, please, if you're interested in decorating and crafting and whatever, you know, I said, I'm fixing to put up my, my home tour come Wednesday, uh, you know, come by, stop by. So it was really nice to meet both of those ladies and uh, thank you guys. And I hope you've stopped by. I hope you stopped by to see me. <laughs> so we were, we were pretty full when we walked out of there. I'm telling you, they also had a dessert bar. I did break down. I had a little bit of, a little bit of cheesecake and a little piece of, just a little piece of um, carrot cake because I could just leave the carrot cake and eat the icing. Isn't that terrible? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm real as the day is long, you guys. I have been trying to lose weight as you guys have probably, I don't, I don't know how much I've lost. I've, I, I have been getting on, have not been getting on the scales. I've promised myself I would not be a, a, a slave to the sales, to the scales, especially. Uh, but I've been trying really hard since we've gotten back from vacation and I think I have lost some, but I did splurge yesterday. Anyway, okay, so that was our Captain George's experience. So the next stop was the Christmas Mouse on our way out of town. Uh, met another lovely lady in there. Kit don't, didn't know her name, but uh, I'll show you one thing that she was really excited that I brought up to the and counter. To this Christmas Mouse, it's not as quite as big as the other one uh, that we usually go to, but it, it was plenty big and had plenty of ornaments that we were, you know, we were looking for. Chris did not find one. He did not, he was looking specifically for a, a glass tree and uh, he had broken one of our dragons. He had, he had gotten a dragon. He, that's what he wanted to replace. And he said the other Christmas mouse has a tree usually that just has glass ornaments on it. And they did not have one in this particular store. So we will have to go back down after Christmas at some point and look for his dragon. So hopefully we can find him his dragon, his glass dragon. Uh, but anyway, of course, I did not come out empty-handed from the Christmas Mouse because I never come out of the Christmas Mouse empty-handed. I did find some of these lovely blue and white ornaments. Got a little little nativity. Isn't that cute? And these were each seven fifty. Yep, seven fifty. So isn't that pretty? So this will obviously go on the blue and white tree. I got that. And then I got a little teacup. Now I got the little teapots. Now I got a little teacup. Look at that, isn't that cute? And I think I'll, I have another one here. Oh, this one was only 650. Isn't that cute though? And then one more. And this one was five fifty. Boy, they're getting cheaper as we go. <laughs> Little train. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Little train engine. So I thought these were super cute. So I will take these right out and put them on the blue and white tree today when I'm finished here. Then, now they had this fella and then they had two smaller versions of him. I wish I had bought one of the smaller ones. I'm kicking myself that I didn't. Uh, but isn't he cute? Look at him <laughs> with his big old beard. Look at him. Is he not cute? So, but wouldn't, you know, two be really cute sitting somewhere on the end of a table or on a shelf or something. So he was $24.99 and I believe the smaller version was $20.99. So I might, I really regret not getting that. Isn't that awful when you, ugh not getting him. So anyway, I might try to go on christmasmouse.com, see if I can't find a smaller version of this fella, but I just thought he was just adorable. So there he is. And then if I had walked out without this one, I would be kicking myself till next Christmas, you guys. But I walked up and you know, I'm, I've been into these Santa Clauses. I've really enjoyed starting to collect Santa Clauses. And 
I came across this fellow. Look at him. Look at his pretty coat with the fur around the bottom and look at the holly leaves and the detail and the cardinal in his hand. Look at that. Is he not adorable? Got a wreath in this hand. He's got a, a pretty crystal hanging from his hat and look at his face. Look how friendly his face. His face just drew me right in. So I no, I'm not a doll collector, so to speak, but I sure am loving my Santa Clauses. Look at his big old belly. <laughs> He's so cute. And his black boots with the buckles. You know, he is what Santa looks like in my mind, you know? So I love him. And this was made from Didian. Our Karen. artist Karen Didian. Didian brings to life her love of Christmas family and tradition with her exclusive de designs for holiday and home de decoration. She's from Missouri and she started her business in her basement home. Well, you're doing a great job, honey. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. He was not cheap. I'm just gonna tell you straight out, he was 89.50, you guys. And no, I did not have a coupon. And yes, I spent out of my money that I make on my channel, and I know I don't have to say that, and y'all yell at me for, don't no, yell at me, but you, you say, Arlene, it's your money, do what you want with it. And I spent it out of my paycheck, 89. What did I say? 89.50, I love him. So there we go. I think I'm gonna set him up on the steps, on this side of the steps. We'll see, I might have to tie him on, tie his feet onto one of the spindles or something, but I might put him and actually pull the other guy off of the, the fireplace that we bought. Remember I put him on there? We'll see where they end up for my home tour. Be looking for them in my home tour, you know, and we'll see. But isn't he cute? Love him, love him, love him like crazy. All right. So now, so that's it. That's all I bought. And that's, I did not want to spend any more money. I didn't, I'm pretty happy with myself that I did save for the Christmas mouse and waited because I went in looking for a Santa Claus. I did. I went in looking for a Santa Claus. So, and I found one. And we took it to the register. I meant to tell you about the lady. Took it to the register and the cashier's like, oh, I'm so glad you bought that. I'm so glad somebody picked him up. I said, Oh, I feel like he was meant to be. I feel like it was meant to be that I, I walked in and found him. She says, I do too. She said, he was stuck up in a box and nobody had gotten him out. I think she must have been the manager of the store or something. Nobody had gotten him out. And she said, I went up and I found him just yesterday and brought him downstairs. And she said, I'm going to put him down here on the floor. And I said, that's good because I don't climb the steps, you know. And uh, I picked him up and bought him. And she was all thrilled with that. <laughs> so I'm super happy with that. All right, now let me, I just looked over here and I have a one little box here from Perpetual Ribbons, but I, this is an important box that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, Bobby had told me that she didn't have any more of this ribbon. This is navy blue or dark blue. It's not even navy blue. This is the dark blue ribbon that I have on my that I made the bow out of, the bows out of for my blue and white tree, you guys. It is very dark navy blue. It is not black, it is navy blue, or, or it is very dark blue. Well, she got some more of this in. I don't know how much she has of this, you guys, but if you like this, go on her site, perpetualribbons.com. Let me see if I have a SKU number for you here and see if you can find it on there if you like it. It is beautiful to work with, too, I'm just telling you. I bought 40 yards of it because I love it. Okay, um, here I have a, a, a number for you. RG0838319. That's the SKU number. If you put that into the search button, you know, for Bobby at, at perpetualribbons.com, you'll be able to find it. It is amazing. It is 1125 for 10 yards. Well worth it to me, you guys. Well worth it. This is some of the prettiest ribbon that I've ever worked with. Honest to Pete, it really is. I just think this is stunning. Come back here. I just think it is stunning to look at. And I will be incorporating it in more places next year, obviously, or I wouldn't have bought four rolls of it. <laughs> so well, I'll be figuring out where to put this in other places next year. But I thought it was pretty. I pictured this 
on a pretty white lantern. Wouldn't it be beautiful to make like a bow topper with frosted pine and uh, snowflakes? And just, I just thought that would be just stunning to make something like that out of this. So pick it up if you want some. It's, it's, she does apparently have some and it is just beautiful to work with. I cannot speak highly enough. First off, can't speak highly enough about Bobby. She, Bobby is the owner of perpetualribbons.com. She has, is so good to me and she is so good to my subscribers. I'm telling you right now, you guys, she treats you guys like, like, the best of the best. She, she's just wonderful. So highly recommend Bobby and Perpetual Ribbons and her product. You cannot go wrong. Okay, dokie, you guys. I am ready to answer your questions now. So let me open up, open up my computer here and get your questions up. And here we go. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six questions. Okay, whoops. Okie dokie. Number one is from Rosie Singleton. I love the way your front porch looks, especially the sled. I bought that same garland in the Christmas tree shop yesterday. I used it on my staircase with white lights, red beaded garland with dollar store little red sleds. It cost me in total $15 since I already had the lights and garland. Nice, nice. I've been a subby of Joseph Sinks for years, ever since you mentioned them years ago. He is so creative with this decor. He really is. I'm anxiously waiting to see your home tour coming up. Question, I was wondering how Chris hangs up the wreaths on your front windows. I was guessing it was with wires. Nope, it was. it's actually command strips, if you can believe it. Command hooks, command hooks. Similar to what I used on my tray the other day. Uh, and, but the key to that is to take alcohol and wipe the place on your window where you're gonna put the command strip and make sure that it is good and clean and then dry. And then put your command strip on and leave it there for at least an hour. Don't put it on and, and hang your wreath. Put it on, leave it for an hour, let it do what it do its thing, and then come back and hang, your, hang the wreath after about an hour. And every now and again, we have one fail, uh, and the, you know we have come home to a wreath on the ground, but maybe one in a season. And that's it throughout years that we've been doing this. So just command strips, that's it, or command, command hooks. There you go, Rosie. Thanks for the question. <laughs> okay, number two from Deb Long. Arlen, love your decorating. I used to decorate a lot, but had to downsize, but still do as much as I can. Do you bake a lot for the holiday? What is your favorite cookie? I, I don't bake a lot for the holiday. No, I don't. Isn't that awful? I guess I should bake more, but I really don't because we don't eat it and we don't need it. We don't need it, N-E-E-D, and we don't eat it. Uh, I, if I do bake anything, it's I take it to give away, you know, but uh, my favorite cookie is chocolate chip, just plain old Toll House cookies. I love them with no nuts. I just like them with, uh, I like them with just chocolate, ch milk chocolate chips. I don't like them with the, you know, semi-dark or semi-sweet. semi, semi -sweet. I like them with milk chocolate chips and I like them about half done. I like them, I like you to be able to break them apart and it just be gooey. That's how I like them, so. But no, I don't bake, I do fudge though. You'll see, you know, coming up here that I, I do two different types of peanut butter fudge and, um, you know, I make other things, but I don't do a lot of baking. So thank you for that, Deb. <laughs> Okay, okay, number three from Mary. Arlen, did decorating come naturally to you or did it take time and patience? Mine is the latter and I still don't have it down. Chris comes up with some ingenious ideas. The centerpiece is breathtaking. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris is ingenious and he does help me bring things to fruition when I probably wouldn't be able to do it without his his help with the lighting and all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm anything special or anything like that, but decorating has always come naturally to me, honestly. And I give all the glory to the Lord. Honest to goodness, I do. It is not me. He works through me. You guys, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I, I didn't even really realize that I was any good at decorating and, until, oh, I don't know, a decade maybe ago. And I just... I just realized that people, Kristen came home one day and she said, mom, you do realize that not everybody decorates like you. 
And I looked at her and I said, what do you mean? No, everybody doesn't decorate like me. She said, mom, people just don't decorate the way you decorate. And I was like, okay, you know, and I do remember when they were little that I would clean the house really quickly in the mornings. I never worked. I always volunteered my time. So on days when I was home, I would clean the house in the morning, clean it from top to bottom. My other house I could clean all in one day. And when I was younger, you know, clean, I'm talking scrub tubs and wash floors and vacuum everywhere and, you know, clean cobwebs. And I mean, I was like a, a clean and meanie, let me tell you. And I, and then I would go, oh, I want to get my cleaning done so I can decorate whatever, the mantle or a table or whatever, or I can try to make this or let me try to make that or let me do this or that, you know, so, and I always loved that. And I, but I never realized that it was a passion really necessarily. I was so busy, you know, when your kids are little and you're always running hither and yon and you're always doing and cooking and doing laundry and and those of you who work on top of all that i give you all the credit in the world i just don't know how you do it i just don't know how you do it uh but i always wanted to get to to my decorating you know so i after a while i figured well this is my passion you know i really really like decorating uh but now i i will say i've honed my skills since i've been on youtube and since i do so much more decorating i really do do probably more not necessarily because of YouTube, but in this house. I really enjoy decorating this house. And uh, I just had visions when before we moved in here of how I wanted to decorate it. And my ideas don't come from anywhere but my own head, usually. Or if I want to know a different way to make a wreath or something, I'll maybe go to Google Images. But I, as I said, I'm not really a Pinterest type of a peruser, you know. So I, I guess I have to say it, it, it does come naturally. I, I guess practice and doing, just the practice and the doing a lot of a thing will help you get better and better, you know. But again, I give the glory to the Lord. I give the glory to the Lord because it's not me. It's him working through me. And that's not just with my decor. That's also with my, my talking, my attitude in life my, the way I treat other people, you know, and, and hopefully have taught people who are on those ugly, ugly, ugly sites that, that are just so mean spirited to me. I, I feel sorry for them that they're so angry, that they're so angry that they need to be that angry. Treat people with respect and kindness, and then you might get respect and kindness back, you know, uh, but whatever. Anyway, okay, number four is from Carrie Carr. Hi, Carrie. Uh, good morning, Arlene. Your outdoor Christmas decor is very pretty. Thank you so much. You and Chris have a beautiful yard. Since you live in an area that once was a big part of the Civil War, have you ever thought of seeing a historian about the history of the land where your house sits? If any battles occurred, or perhaps maybe a military camp was set up on your property. Love you to bits. Have a great day. Hugs. Funny you ask, Carrie. <laughs> I answered you in person on this, but yes, we were told when we first moved in here that our house actually sits on a Union encampment where a Union Army encampment was. And uh, we have researched it. It was a battle early in the Civil War. And uh, yeah, so, you know, here we sit. We have Civil War trenches in our neighborhood. We have placards in our neighborhood to tell us about the you know, the different battles and so on, Battle of Chancellorsville, Battle of Fredericksburg, Battle of Spotsylvania, all of those, you know, uh, it's, it's, we live in a Civil War rich area, you guys. I can't, I can't say that enough, you know. I always say if I see a ghost coming in here, it's going to be the ghost of a, of a Union or Confederate officer, for sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, we definitely are steeped in history here, right, right here on our, on our property, for sure. For sure, so. All right, number five is from Cheryl Hoskins. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, Arlen, your tree is absolutely gorgeous. I have a question for you. How do you store your jewelry? Do you have a jewelry armoire or a jewelry chest in your dresser, on your dresser? In watching this video, I was admiring your necklace and earrings and thought of this question. I sure hope you will be doing a home tour. Yes, I will. Your Christmas decor is just stunning. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Yes, home tour will be going up on Wednesday, as I said, hopefully, if I can get it all done. I do have a jewelry box. I have a couple of jewelry boxes. Um, and they are 
in my bedroom, you know. So yeah, I do, that's where I store all of my jewelry. These are Brighton pieces that I'm wearing today. Same old stuff that I wear every, every day, you know. Well, this is not Brighton, Chris gave me this. But Kristen gave me this. I bought myself this at that um, Yankee Candle flagship store, as a matter of fact. And then this necklace and these earrings I got off of a cruise ship on sale. So, but yeah, uh, uh, excuse me. I keep them in jewelry or in jewelry boxes and keep everything very well organized. And number six, and I get this question probably at least once or twice a week, I bet. <laughs> number six is from Sandy Taylor. Beautiful video as usual. I have a quick question. Were you featured in an issue of Country Sampler? And if so, which issue? Every time I see them on the stand, I wonder because I'd love that issue. You're so sweet. Oh my goodness. Well, we've, we have been featured in an issue, but it will not be coming on the stands quite yet. And I can't tell you as per the Country Sampler editor, uh, exactly when, but I promise you when it gets on the stands, you all will be the first to know. Um, it's, I'm excited. I'm excited. But yes, Country Sampler did come here and they uh, brought professional photographers in and they had a list of where the editor wanted them to take pictures in the house. And I provided, a, 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 I did an interview with a writer. I actually did the interview via email because it was when my dad was recovering from his uh, his knee surgery and I and she had tons of questions and I answered them and I then I had another editor call me last week and say we're just working our way through the process here and just wanted a little bit of clarity so and she said that you, you she said you have told some great stories which you all have heard all my stories you know so uh, but she said we're using a lot of your quotes and a lot of your stuff uh, and I said well that's wonderful I'm glad to hear that so it will be coming out but I can't tell you when but I promise you will be the first to know. I promise. <laughs> and with that, that is my last, that's my last question, you guys. And of course, as always, if you have more, you are welcome to ask them and I will come back with them. Uh, I'm not sure after my home tour this week if I'm not gonna take the rest of the week off and uh, try to get some Christmas shopping, Christmas wrapping, Christmas, you know, all the Christmassy stuff done. I'm about finished shopping. But we do need to wrap and we do need to do th some things to get ready, you know, for Christmas. So uh, we go to Stacy's house the weekend of the 18th. So I need to get uh, some ducks in a row before that weekend. So uh, I'm um, hoping the next week I'll be able to bring you at least a, a, you know, well, probably both of my fudge recipes. Because if I don't take my one kind of fudge, my aunt might divorce me from being her niece. <laughs> Because she loves it so much. So, uh, Stacy's mama. So, I know I need to make that double-decker fudge that looks like a Reese cup. And then my regular peanut butter fudge. So, I kind of need to gear up for all that. So, once I get the, the home tour in the can, which is a big job, you guys. I'm not even kidding. I might take, you know, a little bit of time off after that. You know, just to kind of get my Christmas ducks in a row. <laughs> all righty, you guys. That's it for this one. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping in here and always, always, always thank you for all of your sweet comments, your, your sweet way with me, your support, your support means the world to me. You know, I can hear that one negative Nelly in the back, but the thousands and thousands of you out there who are always there, who are backing me up, who are supporting me means the world to me, means the world to me. You will never know. You will never know. And I've gotten pretty good at cutting off that, you know, turning off that off switch about that one ugly person. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate all of the, the thousands of you out there who do continue to support me and bring me that positivity. And uh, hopefully I bring that positivity back to you. But anyway, let me go into my final words. I don't have a lot of mischief with Maverick today, you guys. I don't believe I do. I may, Candace may have sent me something. And if I have a picture or two, I'll put it at the end over back here after my final words. All right. All right. Thank you all so Thank much for stopping in here today. And I hope all is well with everyone. And for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day making the very, very best out of each day. 
I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love you all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Love you.